So on the first, I think with the product portfolio, and what I mean by product portfolio, for me, that means both degree and non-degree based programs. They could be online, offline, it doesn't really matter, but it's this sort of what is the, what is the body of work or programs that we're giving future students access to that they can select you know what best fits their needs so at Kellogg we have nine degree programs and dozens if not hundreds of ways to engage through executive education and my job and my team's job is about attracting the right people to Kellogg first and then helping them figure out what are the right options for them depending on how they want to learn how they want to study where they are in their career whether or not they want to stop work or not I think I've seen other schools develop new approaches to the schedule. So, so UCLA is an example. They have an evening schedule, they have a Saturday schedule, and then they've offered this third option of a hybrid schedule where they can where students can learn online and in a face-to-face -face environment. And I think that's super clever because they're marrying the the best of all worlds. And then there's a whole number of other schools that are thinking hard about specialized masters, right? Doesn't have to be an MBA. I think the second theme around adapting the curriculum, this shows up in a whole number of ways. Some is about how do you literally structure your curriculum to meet the needs of the students, which I, I think Kellogg has done a very nice job of developing this matrix structure that that exists in professional service firms where you have sort of, you know, an orienting structure on the horizontal of traditional traditional functions, accounting, strategy, finance, et cetera, and then an uh, overlay of verticals of the, of the themes we think are important for 21st century leaders to learn. So innovation, entrepreneurship, architectures of collaboration, the experiential learning is taking a, you know, is growing by leaps and bounds because this idea that students have more learning than just what happens in the classroom is becoming more important that when they're sitting opposite an employer who's interviewing them for a role that they can say they actually applied what they learned. And the third then is on the, on the partnership model. This, I, my sense is that, and I've only been in higher ed for, for four years, but my sense is that the natural instinct is to say, well, we'll build it ourselves or, you know, we'll sort of assemble this small team over here to figure out how to address these changing needs. And the world is moving too fast around us, right? You'll, as soon as you do that, you're going to be obsolete. And so this notion of developing partnerships either for access to students or access to resources or access to expertise, I think is really important. And I'm, I'm excited when I see partnerships like the 2U partnership with UNC or the Coursera partnership with University of Illinois or the, you know, the, the, LinkedIn partnerships with a whole bunch of schools who are creating digital badging and LinkedIn is figuring out a way to to put those on the e-portfolios, right? The, the, those are just going to those are just going to going to grow exponentially as time goes on.